Hey everybody, this is Birch. A lot of people got uptight when they made uh, Captain America a uh, member of Hydra. This is uh, Nick Spencer. And the premise of this was that uh, Steve Rogers had been aged. This is during Rick Remender's run. Uh, Rick Remender had this idea that Steve Rogers was going to basically have his super soldier serum more or less uh, evaporated uh, in, in the big battle. And this had been going on in his entire run where he had Dimension Z and the idea that he was going to age again. Basically, Dimension Z, time went at a different moment. So he's going to live for, I don't remember how long, like 15 years there. And it was like five minutes in the real world. So basically, it was another moment where he got to live out all these years of his life somewhere else. He comes back to Earth and he feels like a man out of time again. Ultimately, <clears throat> all that was designed to lead up to him, uh, basically, uh, you know, aging up. And then he was going to hand the uh, shield to uh, Sam Wilson of Falcon who had been kind of been being prepped for this uh, also throughout most of his run. So it was all, it was, it was a long drawn out storyline to do it. Well, you know, they, uh, the Falcon got the shield, became Captain America. Uh, Steve Rogers was old man, director of shield for a while, kind of taking over Nick Fury. So kind of, they shuffled everything around. Uh, but when Rick Remender left, Marvel was like, well, shit, we got to undo all of this. And so they, uh, they quickly figured out a way to um, basically, <laughs> they have Nick Spencer come in, immediately age uh, down Steve Rogers through the use of the Cosmic Cube and kind of Red Skull manipulation. Uh, but in doing so, and aging him down, they also put in a memory that he'd always been a member of Hydra. Basically, they, they in aging him back, they also changed his history because that's what the Cosmic Cube can do, apparently. Um, and then very quickly, they had uh, all these people say that uh, Falcon's not mo cap, and then... Uh, you know, he handed in the shield because, uh, you know, for reasons. And, and, and anyway, they basically reverted everything back to the status quo. Let Captain America run around for a while and then gave the Falcon a shield back in the same costume and just said, yeah, we'll, we'll try that one again. But this time not with Rick Remender because we hate Rick Remender. Screw that guy. Basically, we want to do everything that he did. We just, uh, we want to do it without his name on it. So let's just erase it and do it a second time. Captain America, over the last 10 years, is balls out crazy what they have done to that character and and everybody goes to the the hydra stuff and the he's tanahishi coats losing faith in america stuff and all that kind of and and sure why not but um but the absolute character assassination is that they they ran a storyline under remender love it or hate it they did it they then got to the end of that decided remender uh you know basically ran him out of the company due to a bunch of bullshit from you know kelly thompson and others and then uh, after they got him out of the company, they undid everything he did only for them to do it again dumber. That's, that's what they did. I wish I was making this up, but that is exactly what they did. Anyway, uh, that's a long-winded way of saying, you know, as long, angry as people were um, about uh, Captain America being, uh, you know, a dirty uh, Nazi Hydra agent, um, they've actually, Marvel has done Captain America much dirtier in a lot of ways because Believe it or not, for a big portion of time, they made uh, Captain America something far worse than a Hydra agent. They made him a comic book artist. And so this this actually uh, took place uh, way back in um, oh, around uh, Marvel 237 is what I see here, but I don't think that's right. I thought it was a little bit earlier than that. They, they'd been teasing that Captain America liked to draw and sketch. And I think the reason... I, I think the idea there was that while he was on the battlefield, you know, he needed some time to unwind and sketching is kind of a solo activity. So it fit more or less who he was. You saw that in the movie as well, where they had uh, Chris Evans uh, drawing on the battlefield, coming up with his costume. And, and um, he's uh, there's there's moments throughout where he, he would just basically draw and sketch in his free time. He drew that uh, Captain America monkey uh, with an umbrella of, you know, doing doing a circus act as a way to communicate that he felt disrespected uh but anyway in the comics um not only uh, so captain america was an artist and actually um drew comics and actually drew captain america which was uh somebody was making that as a, a pretty funny uh funny joke but it, but there was this whole uh, long kind of you know exploration and, and pretty good stuff where captain america was a commercial artist um he uh he basically um, you know, got business part cards printed. Steve Rogers, uh, commercial artist. Anyway, so <laughs> that was that was who he was. And then he gets a job doing comics. I didn't quite get to uh, She Hulk level of third wall breaking, but 
you know, you have these panels saying things like, Lander Mike tells me that Jack Kirby, the original artist on Captain America, used to be able to pencil an entire issue in five working days. I'm not sure I'll ever be able to get up to that speed, but the storytelling aspect seems to be coming to me quickly. Uh, so you have lots of things with him uh, hanging out, and, you know, this is way more fun than advertising, because Captain, Mar- Captain America, Steve Rogers, was a did commercial advertising art for a while, but then um, he does he does panels. But anyway, he, uh, this was back when he was dating Bernie, and uh, this is a, I mean, it's a fairly fun time. He said sack on art, which is pretty badass. But anyway, he talks about loving comics and he's known about it for a long time. And, and, uh, he's like, you know, once a year I have to sign a contract that lets Marvel publish a book about me. <laughs> That's cute too. The Marvel be ethical anyway. But, uh, um, Captain America's like, Hey, you know, I, now you're paid to do your own dirty work. It's almost funny. Who would guess the artist of Captain America is Captain America. Anyway. So, uh, it, 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 this was uh, this was a whole thing that they did, and um, you know he's learned uh, for a life a life of flexible hours and creative fulfillment and deadlines. <laughs> I like <laughs> I like this whole bit. Uh, I think you know this was uh, this is uh, John Byrne who illustrated this, but he's got, he was walking into an office with his briefcase, and this is as we know all comic artists dress in a suit and tie <laughs> as well. <laughs> Come on, Murphy, you're slacking see Murphy on these live streams dressed in like just a casual t-shirt and here's Steve Rogers over there. He, he knows how to do it. He's, he's got a perfect haircut and suit and tie and got his briefcase ready to go draw the hell out of some comics. Anyway, it's like uh, this line today, however, Cap has finally found a career that allows enough time for a double life and enough income to pay the rent. <laughs> okay. Meet Steve Rogers, freelance commercial artist. Drawing on a native talent for art, Steve has at last returned to life, a life of flex flowers, grave fulfillment, and deadlines. Anyway, um, so this is a, they didn't, they didn't really keep, keep doing much of this. Um, you know, uh, as, as time went on, they, uh, I think they, you know, they, they, they kind of walked away. I mean, we don't, I don't see a lot of, uh, comics these days where, uh, Steve Rogers is drawing comics, but, uh, but you know, that's, that's fun. Uh, but this is a pretty fun little backstory. Um, it fit. I always liked that they had Captain America. I mean, if you think about when he was a scrawny pre super soldier serum, um, you know, it makes sense that he would, he would be drawing. He's not going to be into a bunch of physical sports and things like that. So it, it, it all, it all makes sense. Um, uh, but, but anyway, I found it funny. I was just thinking about this the other day. It's like, everybody's pissed off about him being a Nazi, but what about the time that they made him a comic book artist, a dirty, scummy comic artist working for the big two, drawing his woke comics, but no deadlines, creative freedom, and money to pay the rent. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I still always found um, the the entire uh, you know superheroes being poor to be weird. You know, it's always like they're either they're poor, or they had rich families, or they were like getting sponsorships by corporations. But they don't like Captain America. Could you know he had access to all his Avengers technology? Yeah, uh, you know if if he's getting poor, he's like you know what I'm gonna. I'm going to go uh, dive and recover lost treasure under the way. I mean, there's, there's a lot of ways he could do things. He's like, well, next time he's off planet fighting the Kree, he's like, I'm just going to take this uh, coffee food replicator back and sell it to Procter & Gamble and make a shitload of money. That's what I'm going to do. Anyway, that's not the American way. That's not the Captain America way. Captain America way, drawing comics. Anyway, did you like that? Did, did, do you guys remember when Captain America was a comic book artist? It's funny now in hindsight. I do love like all these lines and um, She-Hulk had a bunch of these too, where they're like talking about, you know, as a comic artist, I can only afford this three bedroom apartment over Central Park. Uh, <laughs> uh, sure, sure. You know, poor old Wheezy's running around like uh, she's like, I, uh, you know, there's one, one comic from Bird where um, in She-Hulk where Wheezy's like got a, you know, she's like, I decided to splurge and get this uh, stretch limo and give myself a vacation to Tahiti. <laughs> On an editor's salary at Marvel? I mean, okay. Anyway, it's it's fun. I love you, Wheezy. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs>